here is uh, the agenda for today. Uh, so in the uh, first section here, we'll give a quick uh, product overview of what smart remote management is, uh, followed by uh, setup and prerequisites. There are a few things you need to uh, complete before you can start managing your devices. So once you complete those uh, prerequisites and the setup, uh, you can begin managing your devices. And in this third section here, I will give a quick demo of what the smart remote management console looks like. <clears throat> uh, so that you can manage your device. Um, and then after the demo, we'll go through uh, some known issues. Uh, not a whole lot, just a couple of known issues and uh, how to troubleshoot them. Uh, and then uh, we'll finally finish off uh, with uh, Q&A at the end. All right, uh, so product overview. Uh, so what is smart remote management? Uh, so it's basically a cloud-based device management tool that you can use to uh, remotely maintain, support, and control your devices. Uh, so you can manage not only smart boards, uh, you can use remote management to ma uh, manage your Android device, uh, your, your iOS, your phones, your tablets, uh, any Mac OS, so Apple devices, and even uh, Windows computers. Uh, you can definitely use remote management to manage um, any of these uh, uh, OSs. So, it allows you to communicate uh, with multiple devices online from a remote session. So uh, as, as long as uh, you have your uh, uh, computer connected to the internet uh, and your uh, device uh, enrolled uh, to smart remote management, uh, you can connect to uh, your device from anywhere. And just a note that uh, smart remote management is a white labeled software application. Uh, we partner with our company called Radix. Uh, so Smart did not develop the software. Uh, it's actually a company called Radix um, that developed the software. And it is the only uh, mobile device management software uh, that works with our smart boards. So what can you do with smart remote management? Um, well, a lot of things here. So I've listed out a few here and I will go through these uh, in, in my demo shortly. But um, so a few things I'll mention here, you can monitor and locate your devices. Uh, you can use tags and groups. Uh, some of you may not know about this, but I will go into detail on, on, on what tags and groups mean. Uh, so you can use tags and groups to manage your devices. You, you can remotely view and control your devices. So uh, in, in the console, uh, which I'll show you later, you can uh, remote to uh, any of the devices that you have set up. Uh, you can remove devices, uh, you can install apps on these devices, uh, you can deploy the policies, uh, you can manage device settings, uh, send rem remote execution commands, uh, and a whole lot more. So again, we will cover these uh, in a bit here. So before you use uh, remote management, there are a few things that you need to go through uh, to set up and I've listed the steps here. So you have to configure your network, you have to register for a domain account, you have to enable remote management on a device, and then you can log into the remote management console, you have, to act and, uh, you have to activate the software, and then you can manage your devices. So I'll just go through each of these steps here um, to give you a little bit more detail uh, on what you have to do. So again, before you manage, uh, sorry, before you uh, use smart remote management, you have to configure your network. So what this means is you have to make sure these ports are uh, open as well as these URLs are whitelisted on your network. And um, these are ports and URLs that you have to whitelist on uh, the device end. So for example, if you're uh, on, on your smart board, uh, it's a device that you want to manage, that the um, network that your smart board is connected to must allow these ports to be opened and these URLs to be whitelisted. As well as uh, if you're managing the uh, your smart board remotely, um, uh, uh, say from home, uh, on your home network, you have to make sure these ports are open and as well as these uh, URLs are whitelisted. Okay, the second step is to register for a domain account. So uh, you go to mdn.smarttech.com, uh, you hit that register uh, button in the lower left, and then just fill out the requested uh, information here. So uh, when you create an account, uh, by default, your username will begin with admin, and then you just have to specify an account name. Okay, so the, the account name is, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be using domain 
and account interchangeably. So you, uh, I sometimes call it domain or sometimes call it an account. So basically you have to uh, uh, create an account um, uh, as part of the registration process. And you'll be using this account name to uh, uh, enroll, uh, enroll it at the smart board. Okay, so the third step is, um, uh, so at, at your smart board, what you need to do is uh, open uh, IQ settings. And then there's an option down here that says remote management. Uh, and, you, and then you want to turn on this remote management option. So you want to enable it. Uh, I've noted here, this is uh, just the Radix uh, Viso version number. Uh, you don't have to worry about this right now, but that's just the version of uh, remote management uh, that's on the smart board. So, and then the next step here, uh, like I said, uh, you have to launch remote management settings. And when you tap on launch remote management settings, this is the screen you'll get. So uh, uh, you have to put in your account name. Uh, so I previously in step two, I mentioned that when you create an account, this is where you have to enter that account name. And then just hit the uh, checkbox, I accept the terms and conditions and tap enroll. Okay, so after you've enrolled uh, your device, um, uh, sorry, uh, one thing to note is a lot of the examples I'm showing here is for smart boards. So a, a lot of screenshots, a lot of what I'll be talking about in this presentation is uh, mainly just for the smart boards. You can manage other devices. Um, like I said, you can manage Windows devices, iOS, uh, Chrome devices using remote management. But for the purpose of this uh, presentation, I'll be focusing uh, on our uh, product. All right, so after you've enrolled your uh, uh, smart board uh, to the account, this is the screen that you'll see. Um, so basically just a check mark um, uh, and it shows that your device is already joined to the uh, domain account. So once you've done that, you're ready to manage your device. So you will need to go uh, log into the Smart Remote Management Console uh, and that URL is mdm.smarttech.com. And then uh, your username, uh, just a note there, it's not your email address. It's the, uh, uh, by default, uh, when you first set up uh, and register for your account, it's uh, your default uh, username is admin at, and then the uh, account that you uh, chose. All right, once you're logged in, uh, this is what it looks like. It just gives you a high level overview of the devices um, uh, on the domain. Uh, and uh, just wanted to give you a, a sneak peek there on what it looks like. But again, I will, when I do my demo in a bit, I, I will uh, go into more detail here. And the next step here is you do need to activate smart remote management uh, once you're logged into the console. And to do that, uh, you click on the, your user avatar up at the top right corner and then select account. Um, and this is where you go ahead and activate your product key. Uh, usually you, you get this product key uh, in your smart admin portal. So uh, locate your smart product key there and then uh, activate it here. So once you activate it here, it will populate your uh, product key or, or code on the left-hand side. And I will go through um, uh, why you see some of these uh, codes that are waiting for activation. I will talk about this uh, at the end of my presentation. Uh, uh, it is one of our uh, known issues. So I will talk about that later. So just to summarize, uh, like I said, uh, there are steps that you need to take before you can manage your devices. And I basically just summarized it here. So once you've done that, uh, you can start managing your devices. Okay, um, I will do a demo in uh, my next section here. Uh, but before I do that, uh, just uh, some housekeeping items here I want to bring up. So uh, right now, there are several features and commands uh, that are still disabled and not supported on our smart boards. Uh, when I go through this demo here, I will mention what these unsupported features are, and we will have it documented in our setup guide. Um, and there is work on improving our um, setup documentation in our setup guide, uh, and that is coming at the end of this month. So uh, on our uh, Smart Tech uh, support website, you will see uh, a few changes. You will see some additional documentation 
at the end of this month um, that just better highlights and goes into more detail on, on what features are supported and what's not supported with our smart boards at this time. Okay, uh, and in this presentation, I will also um, highlight, uh, like I said, what the feature, working features and commands are with our smart boards. Okay, uh, right now, let me just switch over to uh, the remote management console here. Uh, hopefully you guys can still see that. Um, so as mentioned, uh, once you've uh, joined your uh, um, uh, device, uh, in this case, uh, your smart board to uh, your account, uh, you're ready to log in, right, to uh, manage your device. So login page, um, it's mdm.smarttech.com. Uh, it would just redirect to this URL here. Um, that's uh, just easier to remember, mdm.smarttech.com. And you can just uh, begin to sign in. Uh, so I have an account that I've already created that I've already registered uh, called ST Support. So like I said, the first time you log in, uh, it's admin at, at ST Support. Again, it's not your uh, email address. And just a note there, uh, if you don't have a product key yet, uh, and if you're waiting for one, there is a 30 day uh, trial for remote management. So um, uh, as I showed you earlier, if you wanna go ahead and activate the software, uh, you can go to uh, click your avatar, go to account. Um, my view here is a little bit different than what you will see because uh, uh, mine's just a test account, uh, but you will see your code and you will see uh, uh, the devices so this is what it looks like, but let me just go back. Um, so once the first time you log in, uh, this is the screen you'll see. So this is your dashboard, gives you a high uh, uh, level overview of your account. So it tells you how many devices you've joined to your account, how many active devices, how many users you've created, uh, how many active users. And then uh, towards the middle of the page, it'll tell you how many devices have been connected and for how long. Um, uh, some, some stats on what apps are installed on these devices, what commands have been used uh, lately, and just the OS distribution. So uh, kind of how many devices are uh, uh, enrolled by OS. So uh, right here, I only have Windows and Android devices. So uh, I will be going uh, over each of these tabs here. Um, uh, so the next one I want to talk about is devices. So this is just my test account. Uh, it's, I got a, a bunch of devices that I've already joined to the account. Um, uh, let me just pick one. Uh, I'll do a quick uh, run through. Uh, so for example, this one, right? Say that you want to manage uh, this uh, smart board. Uh, you have a few options here. So uh, you can remote to it. Um, one thing about remote is, uh, you know, if, if this one is spinning and spinning and it, you can never get um, uh, uh, access to that board, uh, there are a few reasons why. Um, for this one, it's working for me right now because the device is online. But if you do see it, uh, that double spinning arrow looping uh, forever, there are a few reasons on why that's happening, right? Um, uh, one reason is it's possible that your network is not configured correctly. So as I showed you earlier in the setup, just make sure those ports and those URLs are wide open on both sides from your uh, uh, the, the device that the board is connect, uh, connected to. Make sure on the network is wide open there. Um, another reason if you're seeing that double spinning arrow is you want to make sure that the user permission is not enabled. So let me go back to this account settings here. So if you turn this on, it means that when you try to remote to it, there will be a message on your smart board that says that it requires permission before you can remote to it. So if you see that uh, double spinning arrow, just make sure you check um, this uh, option here uh, that it's turned off. Okay, um, there will be improvement coming um, uh, very soon on uh, messages. Uh, so rather than a spinning arrow uh, forever, uh, uh, we're working with Radix um, to implement some messages on the screen to uh, uh, give users uh, 
some a checklist basically on what to check for if it's not connecting. So like I said, make sure that uh, account settings, that option is disabled, check your network. Uh, sometimes the, the board can be turned off. If it's off, uh, then uh, you won't be able to connect. Um, and then uh, uh, one thing I do wanna show here as well is there is an option up here that says uh, who is online. If you click that plug button, devices that are online uh, will uh, uh, will appear here uh, as a, in, in the blue icon under the OS column. So any devices here uh, that's in blue, you will you should be able to remote to it uh, because those are the devices that are online. The ones in gray are offline. So if you try to remote to it, you won't be able to. And I just want to go through some of these uh, buttons here at the top. Uh, so uh, you know about who's online. And then the, the plus button here is just to give you some instructions on how to enroll your device uh, to the account, how to join the device to the account. So Android, you got Windows, Apple, just instructions on how to join to the account. Uh, you got your refresh button, your print. You can print this screen. And then columns. Uh, so you can choose what you want to display uh, in your devices tab. So up here, I have um, a few here, OS, hardware ID, name, email, last seen. Uh, but you can choose what you want to show. So for example, I know uh, smart build number is a popular one. They want um, a lot of users want to know what build number is currently installed on these devices. And then just languages. Uh, this console uh, uh, is not just in English, but we have a whole list of uh, languages here that you can select. Okay, so just back to managing uh, devices. So if I click on the, the hardware ID here, um, I can manage one device or I can manage several devices at a time, right? If I click on, uh, say, if I select all, I can, there's a few things I can do. I can install apps, packages. I can send files to all these devices. But if I just want to manage a single device, I just have to click on the hardware ID of that device I want to manage. So I would just go through um, managing one device and just show you what options are available. So right here, just some information about the device um, that you can look up. Uh, what network this device is connected to. For example, this is the smart board. It'll give you the board name, the build number, uh, the firmware uh, versions. And then just some information here in the middle section here on what apps are installed on this device. And then here's the uh, all the commands and uh, features uh, that you can uh, utilize uh, for this device. So I already mentioned remote. Um, I'll mention repositories actions la uh, last because that's a big one, uh, but send message, pretty straightforward. You can only send text. Uh, you can send it to the device. Uh, location, it will give you an approximate location based on the visible IP address. Uh, so it's not the exact location, but you can get a approximate location uh, of your device where it's located. Uh, lock. Uh, right now, lock and unlock is not supported with smart boards, uh, and neither is get password. Um, so, uh, but siren and wipe is supported. So siren basically just sends a, a, a loud noise uh, to the smart board, uh, and, and your board will also be flashing really quickly. Uh, so that's what siren is. Wipe is a factory reset. So you can factory reset your board from the remote management console. And power, uh, you can restart your smart board. Uh, shutdown, it's currently not uh, possible. It's not a supported feature at this time. Uh, so you're not able to shut down at this time. Uh, and wake on LAN, uh, it's a popular request. Uh, uh, a lot of customers, uh, a lot of users ask us about this. And wake on LAN, uh, basically what it does is that uh, it will uh, change the power state of your display. 
to a ready state. So to a user, um, the display will still appear to be off. It's a black screen, uh, but it is in a ready state, uh, ready to accept commands. So um, just to be clear, uh, wake on LAN will put uh, your panel, uh, for example, say that your panel is in a standby or power save uh, state, it will put it into a ready state. Uh, and like I said, the ready state is still a black screen, but it is ready to accept commands, uh, packages. Um, so it's, it's not in a fully on state, uh, but a ready state. Uh, manage, uh, if you have a device joined to the account, you can remove it. If you no longer want that device to be managed, uh, you can give the device tags, uh, which I'll show you uh, in a bit here. Uh, change agent password that's basically for uh if you re remember if i showed i showed you earlier um in your iq settings uh you have an option called launch uh remote management settings uh, which basically takes you through the steps of uh, joining your device to the account you can set up a password there so that a user cannot access that launch remote management settings button uh and if you forget that password you can change the the password here so that's what this is for. Uh, reset authentication token. So when a device is added to the account for the first time, or if you do a factory reset of uh, your device, you do need to reset the token. So you can either do it at the smart board. It will request you to reset the token at the smart board. If, for example, you do a factory reset, it will ask you to reset the token. Uh, or you can do it from the console here. So there are a couple of ways to do it. And remove account, uh, don't worry about that. That's not uh, something that will apply on smart boards. And neither is custom command. Um, so let me go back to repositories actions. So um, under here, as you can see, there are several options. Uh, install packages. Uh, as you can see here, I have a few packages that I've already uploaded uh, to my uh, uh, console here. So these are packages uh, that you can grab from the Google Play Store or you can upload a file. Um, but I've uploaded a few here that you can deploy. And policies, uh, smart board policies, uh, what you can do is you can lock down IQ settings. So if you've created a uh, a lockdown key at your smart board, uh, what you can do is uh, you can bring that key that you saved on your USB key uh, and basically upload the file here. So you, this option is to lock down the IQ settings. Okay. Uh, and advanced messaging, uh, this is a little bit different from send message. Uh, so, uh, send message, as I mentioned earlier, you can send just text only, whereas uh, under repositories actions, advanced messaging, you can send uh, sound. Uh, so you can attach an audio file or you can attach an image uh, and you can send that to the board. So for example, uh, uh, I've created one here. So uh, if you need to send out uh, an image, you can do that. Uh, you can attach an image here and send it to your smart board. And then you have settings. Uh, and in settings, there are several tabs on the left-hand side here. Some are supported and some are not. I will only talk about those that are supported with smart boards. So you have Wi-Fi. You can uh, use this option to change your Wi-Fi SSID if needed. Uh, there's an option here, even if your Wi-Fi SSID is hidden, there's an option to connect to that uh, network if you want. And then um, I'm just going to skip some of those because uh, those don't apply to our boards, as mentioned. Uh, wallpaper, you can set uh, your device wallpaper if you like. Uh, you can push out certificates. So trusted credentials and user CA certificate. And smart board settings. So anything under smart board settings is supported. Uh, I won't go through a lot of uh, 
these options, there are um, a lot here that you can take a look at. Uh, and, and as mentioned, lock screen, it's not something that we support at this time. So I just wanna give everyone just kind of a quick look at what commands are available. And the next thing I'll go through here, oh, sorry, one thing I do wanna mention about devices and remote control is uh, you can only remote control and see um, the smart board if the smart board is on the IQ home screen or uh, the IQ browser. Uh, suppose that you have a computer connected to uh, your, your smart board. Uh, you won't be able to use this remote function to see that computer. Uh, in order to do that, you have to install um, the, the Radix agent on that computer and then remote to that computer. So you have to install it as a separate uh, device. You have to enroll that computer to remote management uh, separately. Uh, you won't be able to see that input through this remote function. So same as you know, if you have a PCM8, if you have a, a compute card and you have that input selected on your smart board, uh, if you try to remote to it with that input selected, you'll just see a black screen. Okay. Uh, and one more thing here, uh, under devices, you'll see filters and groups. Uh, so as you can see here, I have four groups created already. Um, if you click all, it will show all the devices that's enrolled to your account. Uh, and then if you click new devices, these are new devices that just recently uh, were enrolled to the account. So when, when you enroll the, your device to the account for the first time, it will automatically be given a tag called new. Okay, so uh, by default, these are the two groups that you cannot delete. Uh, you can edit them, but there's no delete option. So you will see these two groups uh, by default. These are the two that I created uh, myself, so I, I, I can delete it. Uh, one of the main purpose of this group is <clears throat> it allows you to uh, stage your devices. Um, so think of it as, uh, you know, if a, a lot of you probably uh, uh, image the computers with uh, uh, applications that uh, everybody will need, right? So for example, Microsoft Office or Adobe Reader applications. Um, it's kind of a similar idea here on what we're trying to do with groups. So uh, when, a new, when a new device is enrolled to uh, your account, uh, in the future, we're thinking of uh, implementing uh, uh, an option where those devices will automatically get the apps that you want on, on, on the board. So uh, for example, uh, some people like, uh, uh, you know, Netflix app on, on their device. Uh, this will, uh, eventually this will give them that option to uh, have the apps on automatically installed on the, uh, on the board without having to go through um, uh, deploying the, the package. So as soon as you join the board to the account, it will automatically have uh, these apps that you want. And the way to do this is, let's just say, for example, uh, new devices, if I go ahead and edit this group, um, eventually we're gonna have uh, an option here under add packages. So if you have added packages that you want um, automatically installed on these new devices that you've just enrolled, uh, this is where it will grab it from. Uh, like I said, this is not currently available at this time. You need uh, an agent that's created in version 11. Currently the agent version that's on the smart boards is version 10, but this is coming in the future. So it just basically allows you to uh, uh, have these apps automatically installed without doing it one at a time. Um, another uh, pretty cool feature here is, uh, let's say I want to send a message uh, uh, to the board. Uh, as soon as you enroll the device, to the account, it's gonna pop up over a message that says, welcome to smart. Um, how you do this is, uh, uh, you can only do this in groups. So what you can do is you can send a message, for example. So if I send a message here to this group, and I hit confirm, it's 
going to send that. Uh, and then if I go to commands, uh, you'll see here that, oh, can you guys still hear me? Okay, sorry, I just had a pop up there. Um, give me one second here. Okay, I think we're good. Um, so as you can see there, I just sent a command to uh, the board that says, welcome to smart. And if I go to uh, the commands tab here, uh, as you can see here, it's gonna show all the commands that I've sent to uh, uh, the devices. So this is the latest command I sent. Um, blue uh, command here indicates that uh, this is a command that you can uh, basically make it a persist command. And what that means is if I make this a persist command, I'll hit confirm there, the next time you join uh, any device uh, to, your, to the account, so the next time you join your board to, to your account, it's automatically going to get this message that says, welcome to smart. Um, and if you don't want that message to pop up, you can simply just hit stop persistence. So again, what this is, is uh, if you make this a persistent command, it allows you to uh, 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 have that message displayed automatically when you join the board uh, to the account. So, um, and, and that's what it means. It's a persistent command. If you make it persistent, it'll turn green. If not, it's blue. And the ones in gray are just regular commands. Okay, let me go back to filters and groups. Uh, so we talked about groups uh, and filters. What filters is, it allows you to, uh, well, I'll use this as an example. So here's a filter that I've created. Uh, if I go to edit, um, uh, you can create a filter based on many uh, 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 selections. There are a few things from choose to choose from. Um, so as you can see here, we have a list of filters that you can choose from, but the one I've chosen here is tag. So um, right here, you also have your logical rule. So you have the and or or. So basically, uh, the filter I've created here is uh, if I want to look up devices that's tagged, uh, that has a tag called home or a tag called MXV2, uh, it will it will show up uh, in my uh, filter here if I select this one. So if I select this one, so any tag that's um, that has the uh, the home tag or the MXV2 tag, it will show up here. Um, so if I want to uh, send commands to these. Uh, devices that's only filtered for home and MXV2, I can do that as well. So I can select the checkbox here and I have all these commands here that I can uh, send to these devices. Okay, um, I did not talk about workflow. So I'll speak about workflow, workflow really quickly here. So what workflow is, uh, it allows you to create um, uh, a list of uh, things you want to send to the device. So rather than sending one device at a time, uh, you can do uh, many commands. So for example, if I want to send an advanced messaging followed by a restart of the device, I can do that. So uh, again, rather than sending one at a time, you can have a list of commands that you want to send all at once. Okay, uh, the groups tab, I talked about that, just another way to create a group from here. Um, and just going back to the commands. Uh, so as you can see here, I have several commands that I've sent to these devices. Uh, I'll, I'll just pick one here. Uh, if you have a command that you've sent, it'll give you a status. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, it can fail, sometimes the can, command can be impending. Um, so if, if it's success, it'll, it'll tell you. But um, let me find one that's uh, that has failed. Uh, the reason why I want to show you this is uh, sometimes it will tell you uh, if you hover your mouse over this exclamation mark, uh, it will tell you why the command failed. Uh, usually, it's pretty clear on, on, on why why it failed. Sometimes it's not as clear. Uh, but if you do get a command that failed um, and and you're not sure what the path is, uh, uh, feel free to you know uh, reach out uh, to to smart support. And, and we'll um, uh, uh, take a look at it and uh, find out why the command failed. But um, one thing to keep in mind is if you want to uh, send commands to the board, 
uh, just make sure the board is online. Because uh, if it's uh, by online, I mean make sure it's turned on uh, because sometimes the command can be pending. Uh, if, if the board is not on, it will just sit in pending. Uh, again, uh, we provided this feedback to, to Radix, uh, our partner company, to uh, give a little bit more messaging uh, on, uh, on this page here uh, as to why uh, the command is not pending. So we want to uh, hopefully eventually have a list of uh, a checklist of what you can check for if this command is isn't pending. Or um, if, if a command failed, then hopefully we'll have uh, a list of uh, uh, the error codes and, and what they mean. Uh, so that's work uh, that's in progress. Um, so that's commands. Uh, next one I want to talk about is uh, users. Um, so I already mentioned that when you first register for your account, uh, by default, it's admin. Uh, at ST, um, in my case, ST support is my domain account. Uh, one thing that uh, uh, when you click on user profile, um, with the main admin account, what you have is an option here that allows you to delete the account. Uh, be careful when you use this uh, delete account option because what it is, it will, it will delete your entire domain account that you've created. So it's going to wipe everything out, uh, including all your users, all your devices, everything. So uh, only the main admin account has access to do this. So just be careful when you use this option here. Uh, so users, um, here are the, a few users that I've created. Uh, I do want to go through the uh, process of creating a new user. So uh, the asterisk uh, denotes that uh, it's a required field, so you have to fill that in. Um, but there are basically two types of users, um, user and admin. Um, previously, we had uh, a longer list, uh, but we've trimmed it down to just two. Uh, so and I'll explain the difference. Um, so a user account, uh, will not have access to the users tab. Uh, so if you create a user account, a user will not be able to see this tab. They won't be able to see all the users. Um, in addition, uh, a user account can only see commands that's, uh, that that user has sent. So uh, they won't be able to see any other commands that other users have sent. So right now I'm logged in uh, as an admin, I can see commands sent by other users, not, not just myself, but anybody that has ever sent uh, commands from this account. Okay, uh, an admin, um, and just to clarify the difference between this admin account and the main admin account, I guess, uh, is what I would call it. Uh, the main admin account has the ability to delete the entire account. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, if I create an admin account, um, uh, for example, this one, uh, they don't have access to delete the account. So that's the main difference between the main admin account and just the regular admin account. And just going back to creating a, a new uh, user, uh, there is an option here that allows uh, you to uh, uh, change user permissions. So when you're creating a use, whether it's a user account or an admin account, uh, you have the option to uh, disable uh, some of these options, right? So for example, if you don't want this user to install any packages, you can turn that off. Uh, or if you don't want a user to factory reset, you can turn it off, right? Um, so one thing to note here is, um, uh, this may look a little bit complicated, but uh, a user account can have all the permissions enabled. Um, whereas an admin, we can turn off some of these accounts, right? So technically it's possible that a user account can have more permissions than an admin account, just simply because uh, uh, what, what I just showed there. Um, you know, uh, an admin, I can turn some of these off uh, and for a user, I can have all of it turned on. So that's why uh, sometimes a user can have more permissions and more rights uh, than an admin account. All right, so that's users. Uh, repositories, I mentioned most of it here. 
I'll talk a little bit about triggers. Uh, so what triggers is, is uh, you can set a trigger uh, uh, based on a few things. Uh, so if I create a new trigger, I can set it based on timing, uh, geofencing, or Wi-Fi. So again, I'll use an example here. Uh, I've created a trigger here based on timing. So um, I want to uh, execute this trigger uh, for uh, two days uh, at a certain time, right? So how you would use this is uh, if I go back to my devices, uh, so let's just say that uh, I'll use this list here. Um, there's an option if I cl click the three dots down here, uh, what I can do is I can trigger a command and the trigger that I've created to execute for two days, uh, what I can do is, um, for example, if I give it a command name, I want to restart these devices uh, at 12.05 a.m. Uh, I can do that, right? So I can say install package or, sorry, not install package, but if I want to restart, right? I can hit confirm and what it'll do is it will, restart all these devices here uh, at 12.05 a.m. and it'll do that two days in a row, right? So that's what, um, that's how you use trigger. Okay, account settings. Uh, I already mentioned uh, user permission for remote control. Uh, I'll skip some of these because they don't apply to smart boards. Uh, device pairing. Uh, so. You can set a pairing code if you, uh, uh, before user can join their smart board to the account, it's gonna ask them for a password. So that's what device pairing is. So if you do see that pop up, uh, that question come up a couple times. So if, if, if you're trying to enroll your smart board to the account and you see a, a, a screen that pops up asking you for the pairing code, uh, this is what it is. It's just more for uh, security reasons. Uh, ad hoc session, uh, what this is, is um, let's just suppose that you, uh, you're you having an issue with uh, your, your smart board uh, and the technical support agent you're working with would like to connect to your smart board. Uh, what they can do is, uh, uh, what you can do is uh, as the user that's having issue with the smart board, you can uh, generate a token ID at the smart board uh, and provide that to the support agent that you're working with. Uh, the support agent will take uh, your your uh, ID uh, and put it in here and then start the remote session. Um, so yeah, this is helpful if uh, the support agent you're working with would like to remote to your smart board. So, uh, uh, so one thing to note about this is that the account name does not have to be the same. So for example, the board that you're uh, joined to is called uh, Kimberly High School. For example, right, and then the uh, uh, the account that I'm using here is uh, ST uh, support, so it doesn't have to be on the same domain, uh, uh, and I can still remote to uh, uh, to your smart board. But you're in, if you're in a school setting uh, and you're the SRM administrator for the school, um, you can do that as well, right? Um, you can remote to a, a board that's in a classroom, uh, and and assist with uh, the, assist the teacher with uh, troubleshooting using this uh, ad hoc session. Okay, uh, so that's just a quick demo of uh, this console and what you can do uh, to manage your devices. Uh, next, I just wanna jump back to uh, my slides. Uh, give me one second here. We'll skip through a lot of these slides because the, I created uh, these slides. Uh, we can send it out if necessary, but uh, it's basically just a demo. Uh, I've shown you guys that in the demo. So, um, so I want to talk about a couple uh, uh, in this next session here, uh, a couple of issues uh, and troubleshooting. Okay, so the first one I mentioned a, a little bit earlier, um, activation. So. As you can see here in my uh, uh, slide, I have a few codes that I've entered here. Uh, the first code here uh, appears activated, which is all good. Uh, 
But then I entered a few more codes. Uh, so the second, third, fourth code are all in waiting for activation status. Um, and, and this is a known issue on our end. Uh, we are working on developing a solution uh, for this. Uh, we're hoping its uh, solution will be available uh, early next year. But for now, um, just to explain this, uh, anytime you do come across this, uh, the next, uh, well, you do have to contact Smart Support, unfortunately, at this time uh, to get this uh, resolved. Um, what we will do is we will uh, generate a code manually on our end, uh, and we will give you a new code uh, uh, for these devices, uh, these codes that are in waiting for activation status. So in this example here, uh, it only took in the first code. The first code has only two devices. So that's why you see the number of devices allowed here is only two. Uh, but then uh, in this example, uh, the user has already connected uh, 21 devices to their account. So uh, the, uh, the number of devices connected is uh, more than the devices uh, allowed. So the, the uh, remote management administrator may get an email saying that, uh, that uh, they have uh, uh, connected more devices than they're allowed. And, uh, and, and, and it, it may be a daily uh, email reminder. Uh, so sometimes that can get annoying. So uh, if you do come across this, uh, please contact Smart Support uh, and we will generate a code for you to fix this. Okay. Uh, and like I said, uh, we are working on a, a solution uh, that should be available uh, early next year. Okay. Uh, this next one, uh, I just want to point this out. Uh, it, it, it is rare, but I do want to point out that uh, uh, if you remember, I mentioned earlier, when you do a factory reset of your device, or if you join your device to the account for the first time, uh, you do need to reset the, the token. So sometimes um, uh, it may not always work. Uh, so when you tap the reset authentication token uh, uh, and you put in your credentials, it may come back with an, uh, an error at the bottom here. Yeah, I know it's a little bit hard to read, but it says registration failed, missing authentication token. So this can occur if your smart board was previously joined to a different domain that what, than what you want to currently join to. So for example, uh, say that your uh, device, your smart board was previously joined to a domain called smart demo. And then if you perform a factory reset and you decide to join to another domain, uh, let's just call it ST support here. So you want to change the domain name, uh, account name of your device. Uh, when you, when you uh, do this, uh, like I said, it's going to ask you to reset the token and it's gonna look for the credentials of your smart demo account, your, the account that was uh, initially joined to. Sometimes, uh, uh, as the user, you may not always have the credentials to your smart demo account, right? So uh, you will only have access, uh, most of the time you probably know the credentials to the account that you want to join to. So when this happens uh, and you don't know the credentials to your uh, initial uh, uh, account, uh, then you get this error when you try to reset. So. Uh, again, uh, if you do encounter this and you're not able to reset the token, uh, please contact Smart Support and we will um, reset it on you uh, for you uh, in our system. So when you contact us, uh, provide the device ID and, and the account that you want to join to. Okay. Uh, so those are the two main uh, issues uh, that we have at this time. Uh, uh, like I said, the first one, we are working on it. Uh, the second one, uh, just please contact us. Uh, it is rare, but it can happen. So if you do come across it, uh, just uh, contact support. Okay, um, so just a quick summary here on uh, what um, uh, to, to do um, when you do account issues. So just a couple of uh, quick troubleshooting uh, tips. Uh, so make sure you follow the network setup uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, if you factory reset or you remove the device, uh, you'll need to reset the token, uh, as I just talked about in my last slide. Uh, uh, 
And then one thing here uh, that's new, uh, and this has come up a few times, uh, is on your smart board, if you do not see the remote management option uh, on the, on the, in IQ settings, uh, make sure the user is not logged in. If a user is not logged in, sorry, if a user is logged in, the remote management option will be hidden. Um, this is uh, basically a, a limitation uh, on Android devices. Um, uh, the, the Radix agent at the smart board, it does require uh, a, an administrator account uh, and a non-signed in user for the remote management option to appear. So just keep that in mind. If you do not see the remote management in settings, uh, just make sure you sign out uh, and you will be able, and, and then you will see it. And again, uh, if you can't connect remotely, just make sure you check that this option here under account settings. Uh, make sure it's uh, disabled. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of things uh, that I've talked about uh, in this presentation is for smart boards, but you can manage more than just smart boards uh, using remote management. So iOS, Android, Windows devices is still possible. Um, so for Android devices, uh, you want to get the, the, the app the Viso app from the Google Play Store, um, iOS via this uh, volume purchase program rollout, uh, Windows, there's an executable um, that you can download. Uh, it, it is available on Radix's, Radix's website um, and then Chrome uh, via this uh, uh, extension. <clears throat> 